guys, it's Rose and welcome back to Cheap Lazy Vegan and another video. Today we have another episode of Munching Mondays. If you guys don't know, Munching Mondays is my mukbang series. Mukbang is an eating show. So we're going to eat together, we're going to chat, and we're going to have a great time. So if you guys enjoy mukbang videos, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And today guys, it is extra special because today is the first mukbang video since the new year started. Yay! Or should I say new decade? Oh my gosh, can you believe it is 2020? I cannot believe. Like 2020 doesn't even sound normal, like saying it. It sounds weird. So anyways, time goes by way too fast. So it is a new decade, so I thought I would start off the new year with a very traditional Korean dish that we like to eat in the new year. So this is tteokguk. Yay! And tteokguk, if you guys have not heard of it, is basically Korean rice cake soup. Tteok means rice cake in Korean, and guk means soup. So tteokguk is a rice cake soup. And if you guys are unfamiliar with Korean style rice cakes, it is not the same thing as the Western rice cakes, the ones that come in like a little like disc situation, you know, the ones that people that are on a diet like to eat and put like peanut butter on. No, 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 no. That is not the rice cake I'm talking about. The rice cake we are talking about is this right here. It is chewy, it is delicious, it is absolutely fantastic. This is the same kind of rice cake that Korean people use for tteokbokki, which is spicy Korean rice cake dish, except for it is shaped differently. So this one is shaped flat. I don't know why, but yes, it's very delicious, okay? So I did make this myself. I do have a recipe video, which is already out on my channel. It is the previous video to this one. I just filmed it, so you guys have to, have to, have to check it out because this is a must-try recipe. This is traditional, except for I made it completely vegan, so no animal products involved, but it is still so delicious. I'm telling you guys, you must try this. So guys, before I dig in, I just wanna remind you that the vegan bundle is still on sale. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, basically for this new year, I teamed up with a bunch of vegan creators to create what is called a vegan bundle. The vegan bundle includes 60 different vegan eBooks and it is on sale for only $50. That is less than $1 for each eBook. And this is a huge deal because this is 96% off of the original price of all of these eBooks combined. So if you bought every single eBook separately, it would cost you over $1,300, but today you can get it for $50, which is an absolute steal. It is such a good deal. I highly recommend getting this bundle, especially if you've been interested in my Everyday Asian Recipes ebook. My Everyday Asian Recipes ebook is included in this bundle, and if you bought this separately, it would cost you $25. So it is such a good deal, and if you guys have wanted to try some of these ebooks for a long time, then you definitely want to try it. Some of the people included, there's Lonnie Jane, Brian Turner, John Venus, Liv B, there's Elsa's Wholesome Life. I mean, it is crazy. So definitely check out the link down below if you guys are interested in getting the vegan bundle. All right, you guys, so I am ready to dig in. I also have vegan kimchi here. If you guys need a recipe for vegan kimchi, I already have one on my channel. Link is down below to the recipe. And of course, once again, recipe for this is linked down below as well. You have to have tteokguk with kimchi, okay? It's like, you can't, you can't have it any other way, okay? I mean, you're gonna have to go to the Korean or Asian supermarket anyway to buy the ingredients for this. So, you know, if you're too lazy to make your own kimchi, just buy your own plant-based kimchi. Nowadays, you should be able to hopefully find a plant-based kimchi in the Korean supermarket, but I'm not sure, okay? Or you can make your own. Anyways, cheers, first bite. Mm. Oh my God, guys. That is so, oh. The trick is in the broth, people. And let me tell you, this broth is perfect. Mm. Once again, Mama Lee, my mama told me how to make this. But it's actually the first time I've made it myself. She just quickly explained it to me. And I came up with the measurements and stuff. It's perfect. Mm. Mm. Oh my gosh. It is so good. So I also added some veggie dumplings in here. I did not make them myself. I just bought at the Korean supermarket. Mmm. You don't have to add 
dumplings. But you can if you want to. There's also tofu, of course. Oh my god. Oh my god, you guys. This is so good. Ooh, big piece here. Oh my gosh. I also have some dry seaweed, so nori, cut up into like little pieces. So I like to always have a little bit extra. So I already added some in here, but I like to have a little bit extra so I can add it while I eat. And it just, you know, makes it better. I, oh my gosh, it's so good. Mmm. So, it's a new year. Woo! Every year I'm just like, I can't believe. Time goes by so fast and I remember one time one of my bosses was like I was like oh my god time goes by so fast this was like a few years ago too but she was like it only goes faster as you get older I'm like <laughs> it's kind of sad isn't it like 2010 does not feel that long ago is it just me I feel like 2010 was like but then again I think about what I did in 2010 and I'm like wow that does feel like a long ago but also like 2010 does not feel long ago I'm one of those people that are like I was born in 1988, people. Oh my god, I'm so old. <laughs> Anyways, I'm one of those people that are like, I think, oh, like, yeah, that happened in 1995. Oh, that was only like 10 years ago. But it wasn't. Mm hmm. Mm. Guys. I was actually gonna film. With this recipe, but the broth takes a long time, so it's kind of like inconvenient, which is why I filmed two separate videos. Mm -hmm. And also, I wanted to be pretty specific with the measurements. Not super specific, but I wanted to like make sure I had proper measurements. Whereas when I do cookbang videos. Like when I cook in a mukbang video before I eat, I feel like I don't want to be that specific. I just want to cook the way I usually cook, which is just throwing things in. <laughs> mm. I feel like I made so much. I, I counted this as one serving, but it feels more like one and a half to two. For for regular people, it's probably two servings. Mm. Some people might be wondering why Korean people eat dakku on New Year's? I wish I could tell you, but I have no clue, okay? <laughs> I should have no idea. There's a lot of things that Korean people do. Like, we like to eat specific things on certain days. I guess that's normal for everyone. But, like, for example, on your birthday, uh, people always like to eat miyokku, which is like seaweed soup, which is also like amazing. I could probably make miyokku out of this broth. <gasps> Guys, I just had an epiphany. I had an epiphany! Mmm. Mmm. Oh my god. Seriously, there's no reason to use meat in this. You absolutely do not need meat or 
fish for this delicious soup. Do you guys have any New Year's resolutions? Would love to hear what you guys are planning to do for the New Year. Or if you think New Year's resolutions are stupid, whatever it may be. I don't really have one. Like, because I feel like, yeah, I don't really have one. What was mine last year? I totally failed. Oh yeah, it was like to read a book a month and I, I completely failed. Oh my gosh. I am so bad at reading. Guys, see now I listen to like audiobooks or podcasts. Now I'm really into podcasts. Now that Daniel and I are doing podcasts, I'm like super into podcasts. Anytime I go for a walk, I listen to a podcast and um, it's actually really fun. It's really nice. Now I get it. Before I was like, I don't really get why people listen to podcasts. And then once I found a few that I really liked, I was like, damn, now I understand. Now I understand. Okay. Mm. Mm. I do have a little New Year's, it's not a New Year's resolution, but like a little goal for our podcast. By the way, if you guys don't know, Daniel and I, we started a podcast. It's called The Savage Podcast. And we started it and initially we were going to do one episode every two weeks plus an extra episode for our Patreon supporters. So it was going to be like every two weeks would be you know, a public episode and then we'll throw in like an extra episode per month for the Patreon supporters. And I was like, you know what? I think we need to do more. So we decided for the new year, we're going to just do one episode a week instead of one episode every two weeks. But one episode per month is going to be only Patreon exclusive. So that means you'll probably get like three public episodes per month plus one Patreon. Well, what am I doing? <laughs> plus one, one Patreon episode. So that's our goal. Like we're going to do basically one episode a week, which I think we can do. Hopefully. And as always, guys, if you guys have suggestions on what you want us to talk about, leave them down below and we will take those into consideration. But yeah, I think the most recent episode, which is out on Patreon right now, also Patreon members get the episode in advance. So they get the episode a week in advance. The most recent one out on Patreon at the moment is about New Year's resolutions. So yeah, and like how to, you know, I guess how to get like motivated for the new year and stuff like that. Just our own like little tips, even though, you know, it's not like we're like, woohoo, so motivated. Anyway. I definitely need to get my fitness on track. Mm. That's always my goal. Fitness, get back on track. My life has just been all over the place lately because my parents are in Korea right now so I'm actually staying at my parents house to watch Nadi and all that good stuff and Nadi oh my god you guys I just dropped Nadi off to doggy daycare for the very first time yeah uh, it was kind of emotional I was like oh my gosh because Nadi was like feeling all like when I first dropped her off she's very good with 
you know, socializing and like she loves other dogs and she loves playing with other dogs, which is kind of why I wanted to take her to a daycare because I felt really bad. Um, even when I was walking her, I just felt like like the energy she wanted, she needs that dog energy. I love when she plays with other dogs because like you can just tell she's having so much fun and it's very different from Minnie. Like if you guys remember, I had a dog called Minnie and she passed away unfortunately. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be like, in two days, it'll be three years, I believe. <sighs> wow. Yeah, she passed away three years ago and it was honestly the worst time of my life. And anyways, let, let's not talk about that. <laughs> anyways, when Minnie was here, Minnie was quite a shy dog and she was very, very low maintenance. Like she, she's a Bichon Shih Tzu, right? So she was very calm and shy, low maintenance. We did take her for walks obviously, but she wasn't really like into playing with other dogs and she didn't get like super bored to the point where she's gonna go and like rip up furniture, at least, at least not when she got older. She used to like, you know, play with our shoes and stuff and like rip up our shoes. But like, other than that, she was quite an easy dog to take care of. And now that I have Naughty, I realize, damn, that's not how dogs normally are. <laughs> Minnie and Naughty are completely different. I feel like Naughty is just like a very typical like dog. You know, she is like definition of a dog. She is very energetic, like always needs to be like with you at all times, always wants to play fetch, always wants to play wants to go for walks for hours and hours and hours, endless energy, and like, she always like digs up stuff when we leave the house, like she always wants to chew up on stuff. Of course she's still a puppy, so I think that's why. But yeah, she's very different from Minnie, so it's not something we were used to. So with Minnie, we never took her, we were also pretty like unaware and like didn't really train Minnie too much, especially because she was quite easy to take care of, so I feel like we didn't know how to actually train a dog. But with Natty, because she is like such a typical dog and she has so much energy and she is quite high maintenance, so we have to kind of, I feel like we have to do things very differently. So that's why I'm like, I wanna take her to daycares, make sure she's like, you know, well socialized. Mm. Mm. So, so yes, um, that's why I took her to daycare today. It's the first day, so I only did half day because I just wanted to see how she would do. And if it works out, then like once in a while, I think it'd be good to just drop her off, even if we're not gonna be away all day. But like a day like this, for example, I like, she needs a lot of attention and she needs a lot of long walks if, if it's just gonna be us staying home, you know what I mean? But if she's at daycare and gets a chance to play with other dogs, hopefully she'll get tired <laughs> and she'll be stimulated and she'll have some fun. Mm. I have no idea how she's doing. Actually, so when I was leaving, she was a bit nervous, of course. Cause like usually she's, she's used to me being there, right? I was leaving and she was, she looks so sad and I was like, ah And then I was thinking, I'm like, is this what parents feel like when they drop off their kid for the first time at daycare? I feel like it's different. I feel like this is worse. Well, maybe not worse. But because, like, at least with kids, you can, like, explain to them, like, oh, I'll be right back. Whereas, like, with dogs, they're just like, bye. And they have no idea if you're coming back. Oh, my gosh. Mm. 
This is literal perfection, by the way, if I may say so. It's so good. Anyways, I feel like I've become a crazy dog lady. I mean, I always was, okay? Don't get me wrong. I was always a crazy dog lady, but it's gotten worse, okay? See, I can't talk about anything but my dog. Whew. That's the most interesting thing happening in my life at the moment. Now that the holidays are done, what am I going to do? Mm. Mm. And also guys, I think I'm going to do dry January. So I'm not going to drink in January, like alcohol. Um, I talked about this in, did I talk about this in the podcast? But yeah, we're going to, I'm going to do dry January, I think. <laughs> Wish me luck, okay? Because it's kind of sad, like after the holiday season, it's over. You're just like, oh God, it's back to reality. There's no more Christmas parties, huh? Mm. But definitely want to like, you know, get back into fitness and all that jazz. Because, oh my God, I was like, we recorded another episode. Me and Daniel, I think it's going to be the next episode where we talk about our embarrassing drunken stories and it like made me question my entire youth i was like oh my god what did i do with my life like some of these stories are bad you guys like you will judge me so hard and it's so bad that we recorded one episode for like an hour and we realized we had more stories and we're gonna have to make a part two of our crazy drunken stories. And I was like, why do I have so many of these stories? It's so embarrassing. much better <laughs> but like most of these stories are from like quite a long time ago about 10 years ago but still mm. I'm not proud of it It is funny how our society is so accepting of like drinking culture and being like a crazy drunk. Even though like alcohol is actually very damaging. Okay. I still like it, but you know, it's kind of messed up if you think about it. Alcohol is still a drug. You know what I'm saying? It's still a drug. but it's like a socially accepted drug. Anyway, moral of the story is when I was young, I was an idiot. <laughs> I still is a little bit. Mm. Mm. 
my god that was so good okay can i just say that was so delicious be protruding okay <laughs> i'm so full but holy mother of god that was so delicious Whew. so you guys this is why i love asian food i feel like it is just so satisfying i don't know it's probably because i'm asian but still it is so good and oh, it's so good <laughs> Don't forget you guys, this recipe is available. Link is down below. It is the previous video to this one. You have to try making this. It is so bomb. I actually can't, I can't even. I hope you have an Asian or a Korean supermarket in your area. And if you do, pay them a visit and try to buy these, these ingredients so you can make this delicious soup. It's so good. I'm so satisfied. I am ready to take on the new year. And of course, you guys, do not forget to grab that bundle, okay? Don't forget, the link is down below for your vegan bundle. It is limited time only. It expires, I believe, January 9th, and after that, it will be gone. So do not forget to grab your bundle. It is only $50 for 60 ebooks. I still can't believe how amazing of a deal that is. Like, it is insane. So don't forget to check out the vegan bundle, and you can get tons and tons and tons of vegan recipes and tips and workout ideas and all that good stuff. So guys, thank you so so much for watching i really appreciate your time if you could do me a huge favor and give this video a big thumbs up and if you're new to this channel of course don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you guys in my next video bye